So this talk um, is, is, as Keith has introduced, um, all about network automation. And the subtitle of the talk is this slightly longer cluster of, um, of products, basically. Um, I'll tell you very briefly who we are and what we did. Um, myself, uh, senior engineer Lou, Laura, and a whole bunch of giants whose shoulders we stood on. And those giants are the likes of FRR, Vios, Linux, um, and a whole bunch of other open source software, followed on from a talk that I gave at UK NOF, gosh, it's nearly a year and a half ago now, where I disclosed a MicroTik IPv6 routing vulnerability. And in that talk, which started along the lines of this, I hinted that our future plans were going to be to move away from MicroTik software-based routers at our BGP edge. And about six months later, after a, a migration that we, we had finished, um, I gave a talk at Net Manchester, and originally had planned to give a talk in April this year, which was a sort of follow on, a one year of where have things got to. Um, but it got postponed because of the the coronavirus crisis um, basically stopping in-person meetings, but there's no time like the present. So why are we doing this? Well, at our BGP edge, peering and doing transit, we had a bunch of MyCritic routers. And as I previously mentioned, uh, we had a, identified an issue in MyCritic software where basically the routers could crash. And during that, we became concerned that this wasn't going to get fixed by the time um, the disclosure, nearly one year after we'd identified it, was, was going to, uh, well, we were just worried, basically, it's not going to be fixed. But there were some other motivating factors, one of which was um, something I talked about at Net Manchester, which was the worst maintenance of my life so far. Now that actually involved some Juniper MXs, but it's also a cautionary tale for other legacy routers that really shouldn't be doing full tables on the internet and definitely applies to MicroTik CCRs as well. And that all comes down to the fact that we've been fragmenting IPv4 address space as the RIPE NCC and all the other LIRs have run out of space. And looking at the graphs, we're probably going to hit 1 million routes at some point next year. So that's going to be scary for, for people whose t counts are all going to fall apart at that point. This all originally took place last year in Reynolds House and Williams House, but then there have been some laps of honour in AQL and Telehouse and Interaction, um, some of which I covered in the, the talk I gave at uh, UKNOF, um, the virtual conference in, in May. And the idea was to transition from MicroTix at the edge to something else at the edge and have well, default routes and internal routes carried by the, the slightly less performant MicroTik BGP stack. In terms of hardware, we didn't want to choose something that was going to be basically something that only worked for us, because we recognise that there is an awful lot of kit out there um, that is MicroTik kit connected to internet exchanges. In fact, your OIX says it's over 10% of, of peers on IXs are, are some sort of microtech. So we wanted to find something that hit a similar sort of price point and also delivered some of the, uh, the benefits we were looking for. So we spec'd up to our hardware vendor, something along these lines, um, where we wanted low power, 16 gig of RAM, ideally one U and four 10 gig ports. We were aiming for being able to push about 40 gigabit in, in one U. And they came back with a rather good spec of a box that looks a bit like this and um, a very good price, uh, £1,500 um, each. So we grabbed two of those quite quickly. And here is one of them racked up um, basically in our lab um, where it would then get promoted eventually to a production router. Um, in terms of software, we looked at a few options. Uh, we wondered, should we actually use MicroTik stack on this more powerful kit? Maybe not. We looked at um, Turbo Router by Six Wind as a potential option, but we ended up settling on Vios. It's a Linux software-based router under the hood. It's using FRR, which is a pretty solid, we think, um, routing protocol stack. And it's using all the usual IP route and IP tables uh, for, for firewalling and routing. 
In VIOS 1.3, which is currently under development, there is plan for XDP support, which basically will mean the, uh, there is a fast path short circuit through the routing stack to push packets even faster, potentially delivering up to 10 or maybe even 20 million packets per core. Another attraction of VIOS was, we've got a big investment in salt stack at Felix, and VIOS already had a salt minion, um, the agent built into it, so, let's leverage our experience and our existing stack there. And so we ended up developing internally what we've called Halo File Router. Uh, it uses Netbox as a single source of truth, plus some YAML stuff for things that aren't possible in, in Netbox. And it makes a config, loads, compares, and potentially commits and saves. We've released that as open source, and we're going to have to make a little patch to that so it's got the, uh, the necessary tweaks for Netbox 2.9, which has made a couple of changes to how the API presents. How do you use it? Well, you start off by um, populating Netbox because Netbox will be your source of truth and it will end up configuring your router. So in Netbox, you make a device and you, or virtual machine, and you give it some MAC addresses and some interfaces and some IP addresses, and lo and behold, that will turn into your production configuration when you deploy. And when you actually make a connection between two things, for example, this router's ETH4 is connected to a router called COW, that will actually be represented in the description. So again, the uh, documentation turns into a live production config. Subinterfaces, VLAN tagging and so on, are as simple as make sure the VLAN's tagged on the parent interface and then create a subinterface with dot VLAN ID and put on whatever IP address and you need there. Unfortunately, Netbox won't do all of the OSPF and BGP and so on out of the box um, because it's aimed at physical infrastructure. It's not aimed at um, any of the logical infrastructure stuff. So we ended up going down the route of using separate uh, YAML files to, to represent that information. So as an example here, here is a peering or transit, well, this is an in, a transit interface and we've said we're going to apply BCP38 to this, and we'd like to um, we'd like to inject this into our IGP with um, passive routes uh, in OSPF. And the way that's working is it uses BGP Q3 with the AS sets that have been specified there to pull out the ASs, pull out the prefixes, do a uh, product with all of the external interfaces, and build a single line firewall rule that will reject and will drop any packet that uh, has not come from our AS cone out of any BGP edge interface. To do that though, we had to throw away the entire BIOS firewall stack. So native commands for doing any firewalling are off limits because it will just break. Uh, it is currently using IP tables under the hood, but BIOS is moving towards using Netfilter gradually. And we will actually pull this into some XDP rules once we've got the time to actually write some XDP code. NetFlow is simple as well. Um, it's already created all the necessary NetFlow rules to spit out some, uh, some sample data. So that's grand. How does peering work? Because we want to make peering safer with this. So we wanted to make it so that we would specify AS sets. And here is one such AS set. They get pulled out with BGP Q3, um, which poses a challenge because some of the CDNs have absolutely massive, massive sets of prefixes in their AS sets. Um, one that we look at here is Limelight, 50,000 prefixes. Well, we can get that down to only 18,000 prefixes with a magic aggregate rule in, uh, in BGP Q3, but it still meant we had over half a million line config file in VIOS which led to some very long boot up times. Um, we're, we're talking multiple hours. So that's not gonna work. And one of the fixes we, or workarounds we've got at the moment is that we are not actually using a full uh, prefix list for some of, our, some of our bigger peers. In terms of how we define our route maps going out, um, very simple, couple of YAML statements to say, don't announce it anything we've learned from upstream or from a peer. Um, for our peers, we are definitely matching our PKI invalids and denying those, and then adding some, some communities that are useful there. Vios has built in RTRR support, so that match, that single match line at the beginning basically solves all of our RPKI goodness. 
and we've now got a new version of, of how we actually do peering in the config file where rather than defining tons and tons and tons of YAML we instead say here's a whole bunch of ASNs so no need to copy and paste IPv4 and IPv6 addresses from peering DB instead just specify the IX LAN ID from peering DB maybe some defaults and maybe some overrides for a specific peer but basically that lot of config there will bring up all of our pairing that we want at IX leads when the time comes for us to join that. An upstream provider, their BGP is also pretty simple. We just want to make sure that we import almost everything. Um, and that there is a rule that is the DFZ minus some bogons. And again, we can do some local prepping for, um, for, for upstream providers as well. And we are matching on invalids and rejecting those as well. And as I said before, RTRR supports built into BIOS. We're using Routinator as our uh, RPKI RTRR provider. However, we might also add in some, uh, some other um, diversity because there are some issues with Routinator. Now, gotchas. We had a few. When we brought this into production, um, literally on the night of the maintenance, something very strange happened. Um, BGP went unresponsive and watch FRR restarted BGPD, which removed a load of routes, but BGP is restarting, so we're going to be okay, right? Turns out that's not what happens in BIOS. What happens in BIOS when BGPD restarts is BGPD has no config, and that's down to the way BIOS works. It takes config.boot and generates FRR's running config, and it doesn't save it. Um, this is something that has been worked on. Basically, FRR's running config is not refreshable if one of the demons crashes. So either you have to have saved the running config out somewhere to repopulate it, or you could try deleting the protocol, committing and reloading the config, or you could reboot the, main, reboot the router, which is what we did that night because we were in a maintenance window. Um, unfortunately, that showed us another problem, which relates back to that awful maintenance I had, which sort of inspired where we were going. And in that awful maintenance, we had by accident announced a default to LON1. Well, this time with VIOS, what ended up happening was um, FRR converged BGP so fast that our BGP session to Cogent for transit came up, peering sessions established, and then VIOS applied the prefix lists and route maps. So that made us very sad because we got this email from, for example, Hurricane saying we've, we've tripped max prefix. Yep. We basically had by accident for a brief period of time announced um, we'd provided transit to tier one ASNs. Yeah, there are some bugs, they have been fixed. Um, and actually the initial fix is not as, as was described. Because what you want to do is you want to have the neighbor configured shut down, add these you know, prefix lists and route maps and unshut it. Um, but at the time there was no workaround for this. Well, it actually turns out you you can say no BGP default the IPv4 unicast and life goes on. Other things that are really important to have, um, it turns out BGP control plane protection is really important and that's why BGPD had crashed that time, so we added that. Is BGP safe yet? Well, on the day that it's BGP safe yet launched, um, and we were a little bit proud that we were doing it before it was cool, it turns out our BGPD seg faulted because of a bug in bgprpki.c and FRR. Great news, that has been fixed in FRR 721. And a quick shout out to Wolf480PL who uh, helped me go through some of the code to confirm that that was the fix. So back to our scheduled content, Pride comes before oh, got an out of memory error. It turns out out of memory is also really bad news for uh, BGPD because all the routes vanish. So let's get back to our schedule. <sighs> no, nope, sorry, um, there's, there's other issues that can happen. OSPFD can crash because uh, OSPF6 LSAs from other vendors, notably uh, Ubiquity and Microtik, can generate something which crashes FRR's OSPF6 D. The good news is that's a bug that's known about and will be fixed in 7.5 and hopefully will come to BIOS 1.3 soon. Yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting year of finding vendor bugs and we have got quite far with our project. Um, there are plenty of features we still want to add. There are things like speeding up the BIOS that needs to happen. Um, and we are hoping that 
I will get some time at some point to follow from Andre Tung's um, XDP article and actually implement XDP support in BIOS. What did we achieve? Well, we've got full BGP on BIOS, the converge times in seconds. The microtics converge really, really quickly now. We're not, we're not doing crazy routing on them anymore. We've implemented v BCP38. We're doing IRR filtering where we can. Our PKI invalids are rejected. Our config is automated and repeatable, and we have a single source of truth. So we feel in many ways that's been a success. And that, some, that is the end of my talk about BIOS and our PKI at the BGP AS edge. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Merrick. Um, are there any questions from our participants? We currently have not received any questions in the Q&A. We do have a little bit of time for any questions, if anybody has any. If not, uh, I will hand over to Keith um, to carry on with the program. Thank you, Merrick. Okay, thank you. I'll be over available to you, questions at the end as well uh, during the social. Cheers.